again. And this time from the top. Now, what do you mean? Just what I said. Wait. Get against the wall. All of you. Look, you too. Keep your hands in the air. Come on. Don't anyone try to follow us. And I mean what I say. All right, boys. The drinks are on the house. Where'd you get that money? <laughs> when you turned that table over, you sure hit the jackpot. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, it's yours. I saw your hand. Thanks. You better stop gambling, young fella. It isn't worth it. I guess you're right. Thanks. I'll take your advice. Is that a promise? It is. And I'll keep it. I hope you do. And good luck. Thanks. It's a fine line of talk coming from the Cheyenne Kid. And I meant every word of it. For myself, too. You mean you? Yes. From now on, we're going to do honest labor. I made up our minds some time ago. You better see a doctor. Now, boys, just come in closer. I'm gonna sing you a little tale about a nice tall cowboy whom I meet on the trail. Now, this caballero, he is a different one. He was a Popeye, toothless, spot belly, bow leg, a cross-eyed, funny McGon. <laughs> now he tried to comb his hair, but there was nothing there. His punch was low and walk was slow, his weight no horse could bear. He sure was an awful sighty -o. You ought to see his mustachio. It looked to me like he swallowed a cow and his tail was sticking out the o. <laughs> Were you thinking about me, Manuel? Oh, no, this caballero had a big mustachio. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, am I glad this fall branding is over. Sure, me too. It's mighty strange that you two boys should have to work for a living. What do you mean, Davis? Well, you've got the reputation of being pretty lucky with a deck of cards. Now, you know I've quit gambling for good. I never saw a gambler who didn't backslide sooner or later. Well, here's one that won't. Everything all ready, Manuel? Sure, Cheyenne. Except I can't find my silver spurs. Oh, well, don't worry. They'll turn up. All set, boys? All set. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Let's make it a race back to the ranch. We each put up one dollar, and who win? They call the jackpot, huh? That's me. All right, all right. Let's make it a real race. Line up for a fair start. All right, all right sure. Right. <laughs> now listen, pal. You pick them up and lay them down as fast as you can so we win this race. And out of the jackpot, I'll buy you the best set of shoes you ever have. You ready? Set? Go! Well, 
Oh, so tomorrow we can have another race, you know. <laughs> no, you don't think so. Oh, hi, Cheyenne. How are you, sir? Well, you're back from the Brandon a day earlier than I expected. Yes, we finished that job in jig time, sir. And here's your tally book. Oh, that's fine. That's fine, kid. Sit down. <clears throat> I want to have a little talk with you. Cheyenne, I like the way you've taken hold of things since you've been on the box, Sam. The men seem to be more agreeable. They do their work better. From now on, you're a foreman. Well, thanks, Mr. Roberts. And I'll try very hard to make good. Well, you've already made good, as far as that's concerned. I remember what a roistering, gambling galoot you were a short time ago. And I'm glad to see the change that's come over you. I'll make it stick, too. Good. And that brings me to something else I wanted to say. You've probably noticed that the Box M has been buying and selling quite a few cattle of them. Now, I find that I'm not quite as spry in getting around as I used to be. In fact, I believe I'm getting old. I understand, sir. I want you to go down into the big smoky country and pick up a bunch of feeders I'm buying. Of course, these yearlings have got to be up to par, but that will give you a chance to show how good a judge of stock you are. The Adams Ranch is right close to Wellston, but I guess the boys had better drive the herd over into Moon Valley and meet you there. You aren't afraid I'd get lost in Wellston, are you? No, indeed. If I was, I wouldn't send you. <laughs> I want you to meet your old friend Joe Farnham there. Give him my regards, too. Very well. Here's a thousand dollars. The price agreed on it. The cattle are all right. You can take some of the boys with you if you want to, although we are a little short-handed. Well, I can drive the stock back alone, Mr. Roberts. You're sure? Sure as shooting. Well, then, you better get going as soon as you can. And good luck to you. Thanks. Well, hello, Davis. Why didn't you let us know you were here? Oh, I didn't want to butt in on your conversation. Meet your new foreman. Well, so long, boy. Good luck, Mr. Roberts. Well, Davis, what you got on your mind? I want my time. I'm quitting. Oh, what's wrong? Haven't I always treated you right? No. I'm the oldest man on this boxing outfit. I should have had that job as foreman. Well, I'm sorry we can't agree on that. I'll check up on your time. Go on this trip with you. We always go places together, no? Yes, but this is business and not pleasure. And besides that, there's plenty of work for you to do right here. But you haven't been in town for a long time. And who's going to take care of you when you get into trouble? Ah, wow, but there isn't going to be any trouble. No more fights, no more gambling, no nothing. I've reformed, or haven't you noticed? Reform? You know the kid's reputation, and you're letting yourself in for a mess of trouble by trusting him with a thousand dollars. Well, I'm sorry we can't agree on that either. There you are. What's the idea? Oh, it's my mistake. It's your role. <laughs> my spurs! I suppose you planted them in there yourself. Why, you big liar. That'll teach you to keep your hands off of my stuff. Look at that, Davis. Pick up somebody your own size. Oh, all right, big shot. You asked for it.
Load him on his horse, boys, and head him down the road. He's through with the box in. Cheyenne! I just got to go along with you. I know you'll need me. Nothing doing. You'll stay right here. And if I see you tagging after me, I'll throw a couple of slugs in your direction. And I mean it. I hope. Yes, yeah, very good news. We found a buyer for some of our cattle. Hmm. Seems kind of strange you have to get out of town to sell your stock. You raise good beef on the Lazy A. Eh? By the way, do you happen to owe any money to Jeff Baker? Why, why yes, Mr. Farnham, we do. That is, my brother does. Would that have anything to do with the local buyers not being interested? Well, it might. I advise you to square up with Baker as soon as you can. He's got a lot of influence around here, but he only uses it for his own benefit. That's what I think, too. Well, this cattle deal will clear up what we owe him. Well, that's just fine. Goodbye, Mr. Farnham. Goodbye, Miss Ruthie. Good news, Chet. Now, look, Chet. We'll use every bit of that money to pay off what you owe Baker. But you've got to promise me not to get in debt to him again. Oh, sis, you've got it in for Jeff. He's all right. He's not pressing me for those gambling debts. Then what's he doing coming around here all the time, seeming to be so interested in our affairs? Why, he's coming to see you. I thought you knew that all along. Oh, I suspected it. But I know it all flatters, and the quicker he's paid off, the better. Now hustle out and round up those yearlings. You've got to meet that Box M rider in Half Moon Valley. Oh, there's Baker now, and I don't want to see him. Oh, don't be that way, sis. Hi, Jeff. Hiya, Chet. Just happened to be riding by. Thought I'd drop in. Look, Jeff, my sister has the idea you're pressing me for that money I owe you. Oh, so that's what it's all about. Now, don't you worry. I'll straighten that out right away. Allow me, Miss Ruth. No, thanks. About those gambling debts that Chet owes me. Oh, you know I know. That? We're arranging to take care of that. Tomorrow, perhaps. We're selling some yearlings. And... Selling yearlings? Who's buying them? Doesn't matter. To you, I mean. You'll get your money. Isn't that enough? Oh, I'm sorry if I appear nosy, Miss Ruth. I just hope you'll get a good price, that's all. We are, thank you. Miss Ruth, don't you see that I'd like to be your friend? You know, there's a lot of things I could do for you and your brother, if you'd let me. Sorry, Mr. Baker, but we don't need any help. The Lazy A is doing quite all right. Well, hello, Davis. The old catamount. How are you? Where you been keeping yourself? Oh, well, I been up with a box M outfit, but then I quit. You don't know where I can get a job, do you? Well, uh... Hey, Jim, the usual. Say when. Uh -huh. Hey, speaking about jobs, I've got one that might interest you. Right now, I'm angling for that Lazy A spread. Lazy A? Why, the Cheyenne kid's on his way down here right now with a thousand dollars of that Box M money in his pocket to buy up some of their yearlings. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, so that's how it is. Excuse me a minute. I'll be right back. Hmm. Carson. You interested in picking up a little easy money? Well, you know I would, Baker. Well, the Cheyenne kid's on his way to town with a thousand dollars in his poke. I'd be very much obliged to you if you could sort of uh, relieve him of it. Savvy? It'll be a pleasure.
You might as well go back to the ranch, sis. I can drive him alone from now on. Think you can make it? Sure. And if Robert's man's on time, I'll be back this afternoon with the money. I hope he'll like the stock well enough to buy. Oh, he'll be bound to. There's no better bunch of feeders on this range. Bye, Chet. Goodbye, sis. Everything's all right now, ma'am. You're not hurt, are you? Of course I'm not hurt, Cheyenne. What are you doing around here? And what's the idea of that outfit? Well, you say you're going to throw a couple of bullets my way if you see me tailing you. But I know you wouldn't shoot a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get out of here. Before someone sees you in that outfit. My, that poor old woman certainly had a scare, didn't she? Yes, ma'am, I reckon she did. It's a good thing you happened to be on the job. For her, I mean. Oh, shucks, ma'am, it wasn't anything. Well, the team was almost up when I caught them. That's not the way I saw it. I wonder if maybe I hadn't better go over and see her. Being a woman... Oh, no, no, ma'am, I wouldn't do that. She seems okay now. I guess you're right. Well, so long. Now look what you've gone and done, you loco maverick. The prettiest girl I've seen in a month of Sundays. And I have to send her away because you're dressed up like a scarecrow. Now you head back to the ranch and stay there. Understand? And those are orders. Nothing doing. I'm on my vacation. And you can't give me any orders till I go back to work. Now look, vacation or no vacation, you can't take a wagon where I'm going. Now if you insist on dogging me around, meet me at Moon Valley when I bring the cattle through. All right. I do it. But just the same, you better look up on that hombre who take a shot at you. Well, whoever it was is gone now. No use looking for him. I'll see you later. Adios. Cheyenne kid. How are you? Glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, too. And you can haul off those IOUs you've been holding for so long. I'm going to retire them for good. Well, I'll get them. Say, where'd you get all them big bills? 
You ain't taken the bank robbing, have you? No, indeed, Mr. Farnham. I work for my money nowadays, and this money isn't all mine. A thousand of it goes to buy a bunch of yearlings for the box M. You're buying them at the Lazy A, eh? Yeah, but how did you know? Carson must have missed connections. The kid's in town. Yeah? Well, where is he now? I just saw him down at the grocery store. Do you uh, want me to work on him? No, no, lay off that rough stuff. All I want to do is to sidetrack that Lazy A deal. Yeah, I got it. We'll get the kid into a poker game and clean him out of that cattle money pronto. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. He... Oh, once a gambler, all with a gambler. And once he's started, he'll go for every cent he's got. You wait here. Well, I've got to move on. Adios. So long, kid. Well, hello, kid. So you haven't been in town in a long time. Howdy, Becker. So the boys will sure be glad to see you. You know, we haven't had a real big game since you left. Sorry, but I'm in town for business and not for fun. Oh, quit kidding. You never passed a chance to win a high stake in your life. Come on, now, what do you say? Nope. Penny ante with beans is my limit these days. Well, come on down to the place and play a stack or two on the wheel. Just for old time's sake. All right. I've got just $10 left, and I'll play it on one turn of the wheel just to show you I can gamble or leave it alone. Fair enough? Now you're talking, kid. Let's go. See that Chet Adams doesn't get that thousand dollars. You mean? Now they're meeting in Half Moon Valley. Get going.
Have you seen the Cheyenne Kid? Well, sure. He was here just a short time ago. You'll find him right up the street somewhere. No, no, that's just what I don't want to do. I want to keep out of his way, because I got important business to take care of. I got to see my senorita. Eh? Hey, we've been hanging around here about three hours. He should have been through here long ago. <laughs> Hello, Cheyenne. Gee, I'm glad to see you. What are you doing now? Well, the gambling kid. <laughs> I've been working for the Box M since I saw you last. I'm supposed to buy a bunch of yearlings from the owners of the Lazy A. <laughs> There's a stock, and I'm one of the owners. Chet Adams is the name. Well, that is funny. I did forget to ask your name that time we met up. How about your promise? Doing any more gambling? Oh, a little now and then, but not much. Well, I think I'll look over the stock. Help yourself. Bunch of stock. Have you got the bill of sale? Yeah, all signed and ready. Here's your money. Thousand dollars, is that right? Right and thanks. Hmm. According to what I see, we're too late. The deal's already been closed. Looks like it. Well, so long and good luck. Adios. And why not give that promise one more chance? I will. Wait. Well, we're too late to do Baker any good. But I could sure use a piece of that thousand dollars. Yeah. So could I. Shot in the back. And the last man I saw him must have been the Cheyenne kid. It was to hand him the money for the steers. Not a penny in his pockets. And the Cheyenne kid lost a thousand at Baker's on the wheel. You stay here, Clem. All right, boys, let's get going. Scatter out. If he tries to get away, let him have it. You're under arrest. Me under arrest for what? For the murder of Chet Adams and cattle stealing. What is this, a joke? I never killed anybody in my life. As far as those cattle are concerned, I bought them. And I've got a bit of sale to prove it. Save your talk for the judge. I'm taking you to jail. My boys will take care of those yearlings. You're all wrong about this, Sheriff. Come on, get going. I didn't kill Chet Adams. Get going! Adams, 
This is the fellow I'm holding for the murder of your brother. Are you Miss Adams of the Lazy A? Yes. And do you think I killed your brother? Yes, and so does everyone else. I caught you with the Lazy A yearlings after Chet Adams was shot. If you didn't do it, how'd you get the cattle? I told you how I got them. I bought them. And here's a bill of sale to prove it. Miss Adams, you told me you and your brother signed this bill of sale before he started the drive. Well, we did. We're... That is, we were partners in the ranch. And, and we both had to sign it to make it legal. You see, this bill of sale doesn't prove anything except that you killed Adams to get it. I tell you, I paid him a thousand dollars. Never mind that. I'm locking you up. Adams, you'd better run along. I know how you feel. We can talk later. What do you want to see me about? About Cheyenne Kid. You don't think for a minute that he killed Adams, do you, Sheriff? Well, it looks bad. He had a thousand dollars to pay for those yearlings, and he lost a thousand at Jeff Baker's place. In my opinion, the Cheyenne Kid shot Adams and stole his cattle in order to cover up with the outfit he works for. It looks open and shut to me. That'd make a good case, Sheriff. But for one thing, I don't think the kid lost a thousand dollars. Oh. Here comes Baker. Do you mind if I ask him a few questions? Not at all, but I don't get your drift. Howdy, Sheriff. Hello, Baker. Say, Farnham, uh, any mail come from me in that late delivery? Not a thing. By the way, Baker, what is this story about the thousand dollars that the kid lost to you? Well, there's no story to it. The kid came into my place and played the wheel, lost a thousand bucks, that's all. Must have been a dozen fellows around there saw him do it. Well, are you, you specially interested? Oh, not specially. But I happen to know how much money he had in his wallet. Was it $50 bills he lost to you? 20 fifties? Yeah, yeah, that was it. $50 bills. Sheriff, I guess you'll need that money for evidence. Sort of an Exhibit A to show that the kid didn't have the money to pay Chet Adams, like he said. That's right. I'll have to impound that money, Baker. I'll step around to your place and pick it up. Well, uh, Sheriff, you'll have to uh, wait till tomorrow morning. See, that's over in my safe deposit box, the bank. That'd be okay? Yeah, tomorrow's all right. So long. I wonder what's keeping Baker. He should have been here long ago. He'll be here. Give him time. Well, if I had my way about it, we'd skip across the border right now. Don't be so jittery, Davis. Baker will take care of everything. Uh. you want? He's my pal. I'm going to talk with him. Nobody's going to talk to him. Get out. But I'll try Bell. to... Bell, or I'll put you in a cell, too. Who, me? Right. The sheriff sees you. Oh, he's all right. He's way down the street. Hey, what about this murder of Chet Adams? Never mind about that. I've got to get out of here. Throw it to me.
Soup is on, quick. I was just on my way to see you, Sheriff. There's something I wanted to tell you. I thought you might be interested. Well, there's the wagon I saw and the woman I was talking about. The Cheyenne kid just escaped. That makes it look like he is guilty after all. Well, now, don't say that, Miss Ruth, because it ain't so. I've been checking. Now, first off, I'm positive that the kid didn't lose that $1,000. Why, I practically had to force Baker to get that stolen money so he could prove to the sheriff that the kid lost it. Then, then all we have to do is watch Baker. That's right. And I don't think he'll try to slip away before tonight. And I'll be right on his trail. It's a close shave. That's all I know about it. Just what I heard around town. So Baker said I lost a thousand dollars, huh? Well, he knows I only lost ten. Clever trick. We've home every foot of ground around here. Let's get going. I'm going to town right now to find that maverick and make him tell the truth. There's your man, Cheyenne. Let's see where he's going. Oh, well, hello, Baker. The fine brought you fellas made of things. I didn't tell you to bushwhack Adams. Well, we know that, Jeff, but the way the deal works... Where's the money? There it is. 
couple of dollar bills. Yeah, and a three-way split ought to be fair enough. Well, what's wrong? It's all there. I've been tricked. Farnham trapped me into saying I won this thousand from the kid. And that it was in fifties. Twenty of them. Farnham must have known that the Cheyenne kid had nothing but hundred dollar bills. Well, now I am in a jam. And you numbskulls put me there. Well, what do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. You birds got yourself into this jackpot, and I don't want any part of it. If it comes to a showdown, I'll just admit that I lied about the money and let it go at that. Now, listen, Baker. You've got another guest coming. You're in this just as deep as we are, and you're not going to leave us holding the bag. But if it comes to a showdown, we'll swear you shot at him. All right, what is it, Jeff? The three of us sticking together, or... I think it'll be the three of you hanging together. Get their guns, Manuel. Then get that rope and tie them up. Now, Baker, we're going to have a little talk. And then you're going to the sheriff. Well, you ain't got nothing on me. Oh, no? I wish I could put this rope around your neck. That sounds like it came from Carson. I'm sorry I broke out of your jail, but here are the men responsible for the murder of Chet Adams. And here is the money to prove it. Hmm. Hundred dollar bill. Why, this proves what Farnham told me and Robert's verified. I guess that puts you in the clear, kid. Yes, I guess it does, Sheriff. Come on, you fellows. We're going back to town. Come on, now. Pleasure. 